Hey guys, today I'm going to be reviewing and analyzing Shark Pixels Portrait in a Pinch Photoshop action. Can you really retouch a picture in 90 seconds as per their claim? Another claim they make is this can be done in one click. Is it true? We're going to find out. So let's get it on. Before we get started, please help me out and subscribe to my channel. It'll help me and encourage me to continue delivering high quality content. All right, guys, so this is going to be an analysis of Shark Pixel's portrait in a pinch Photoshop action. The way that I came across this was an ad on Facebook it says Shark Pixel professional retouching. A single click that creates 250 transformations. My portrait in a pinch action will do 90% of the work for you with one click. Okay, and it's going to help you improve your images. Enjoy. Let's click on that. Let's see if we can get instant access. Okay, they are attempting to upsell me with this beauty brushes, what looks like a brush set for Photoshop for $19. Also guys, I'm not aware of any photographer that has ever purchased a brush set for $553. Uh, no thanks, I'm not interested right now. Order confirmed. Thank you for being part of the Shark Pixels community. Let's check my email. We've set up an account for you on Shark Pixel to finish creating your account, set up a password. Okay, I'm logged in and now I see portrait in a pinch action. Open, download. And there's a couple of videos to watch here. Now, why do I need videos? Isn't this one click? Isn't this done in 90 seconds? That's what you told me in the advertisement. So I don't have to watch any of these videos. So let's move forward and let's see uh, how this works in Photoshop. I got the actions installed. Now there's two of them. One is Shark Pixel Portrait Full Retouch Workflow. The next one is Shark Pixel Portrait Full, full Retouch Workflow New Neural AI. I'm assuming that's the one that she wants me to run. So let's go ahead and move forward with this and let's run it. Caution, this action utilizes the neural filter skin smoothing filter to ensure proper action performance. Make sure the skin smoothing neural filter has been downloaded from the cloud first. So let's stop. And what you'd want to do is make sure that your neural filters have downloaded that skin smoothing one. So you'll go to filter, neural filters, and it's going to be in here, skin smoothing. Okay, so assuming you have that neural filter skin smoothing filter going, we should be able to run that action. So let's go to the action. We'll play. We'll continue. The action is finished. Here's a few helpful hints. You'll only need to paint on the group masks, the black ones. So to collapse, I'll have to paint. What do you mean I have to paint? This is a 90 second one click action. That's what you told me in the ad. All right, so this is what the action produced. Let's uncollapse all of these. So we have a background, we have a skin blur, which is comprised of what appears to be a high pass filter and then the neural filter blur. Uh, we have a blank blemishes layer. I'm assuming the intention here is for us to use clone stamp on a s sample, uh, changing that from current layer, current layer to current and below, or to use the spot healing brush tool or, or healing brush tool. Okay, and then there is about eight additional adjustment layers. Well, look at that. I guess I have to do additional work. It doesn't appear to be done in one click or 90 seconds at all, does it? Unfortunate that professional photographers has to have to resort to those kind of claims in order to get an email. That's essentially what's going on here. That's what it appears to be. I mean, I could end this review right now and just let you know that this is not 90 seconds. It's not one click. <laughs> These are adjustment layers that any photographer, any retoucher that knows what they're doing will build as they complete their retouch, or they probably have their own action. The only benefit from this free action is you'll see kind of the typical layers that a retoucher might build to complete their retouch process. Now, is that a good thing? I don't know. Um, I learned it on the streets, as it were, building my layers as I went. I didn't run any actions when I learned retouching. Uh, or you, I didn't use any actions, rather. So this is good, I suppose, if you're new to retouching and 
but you also have to understand layer masks. Right now, they're all inverted. Right now, all the layer masks are off, right? So, for example, she has applied, she probably has applied blanket adjustments across the entire image and then just name them suitably, you know, as per as per the intention that, that she wants. So, for example, this eye whites. Uh, what you do is you take your brush, you go to your black brush, or sorry, your white brush, and um, we go in, and what I would do is change my flow pretty low. Let's just see what happens. So, yeah, this just gets rid of... Uh, the capillaries, I don't like to go heavy-handed. Okay, so that reduced it, that reduced the redness of the eyes. And then she has two layers here, one for brown hazel eyes, it appears, and one for blue-green irises. I have a blue-green iris, so I'll go with that. Okay, fine. Blush. Same thing, white brush. I'm not really feeling that this model in particular needs any makeup, so I'm going to skip that. Highlight and contour. Let's take a look. This is levels. Uh, what has she done here? I don't see any adjustments. Okay, I'm not seeing where the adjustment was. I could be missing something. Hold on. Is this a... Oh! Oh, oh, okay. She, it's a, it's a blend mode. She changed this to screen. Okay, and then contour. I'm assuming is burning. Yep. She changed this to multiply. No changes in the actual levers here. I mean, this can be done with curves. I don't know why people use levels. Levels is is not a good. I mean, this basically you can do the equivalent of just do this with your curves layer. It's the same thing. Let's compare and contrast. You'll see what I'm talking about. Boom, boom. Basically the same thing. Let's pull this down a little more. Right about there. Yep. Anyway, that's dodge and burn. And then for teeth, I'm assuming she just removes the yellows. <clears throat> this is a selective color adjustment. Yellows, and there it is. Negative 62 on the yellows. That's pretty common. Uh, you can do that with selective color. Selective color is probably the ideal, ideal choice. Hue saturation you can also do by selecting yellow and then reducing the saturation to like null. It's another way to go. Here she used uh, a curves layer and looks like she bumped the midtones just slightly and uh, up and down the spectrum as well. And then lips, hue saturation. Yeah, and then the color balance for the lips. Uh, so let's take a look at the lips real quick. I think I can adjust that. Let's bring my flow down to 10. Okay. Yep. All right, blemishes. Let's go ahead and go through my blemishes. I'm going to use a clone stamp tool. I'm not going to go crazy with this. You, you get the idea. And what time are we at, by the way? Well past 90 seconds. How unfortunate. This And this is not... I mean, I, I prefer to use frequency separation to remove blemishes. This is not ideal, in my opinion. In fact, I'm 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 moving to dodge and burn as a complete solution because it's the effect, the end result that you get with dodge and burn is so incredible. It's time consuming, but there's no easy shortcuts in life, and the same applies for photography. Get rich quick. There's also get good quick schemes out there, and it sounds like that this is unfortunately one of them. So I'm not going to move any forward with this. I'm not really satisfied with this as a solution. Um, this might be decent for beginners who want to understand layer masking and to see the tricks, the different adjustment layers that you can use to apply those changes. But at the end of the day, from what I've seen of her work, Christina has really great work. 
this advertisement is disappointing. It's not one click. It's not 90 seconds. And it's not completing 90% of the work. I don't know where she's getting that from. It's, not, it's certainly not completing 90% of the work. It completes maybe 5% of the work <laughs> by setting up the layers. The implication that she's making is that 90% of what we do as retouchers is creating layers. We don't care about layers. You can create layers all day, anytime, instantly, as you need, as you're re retouching on the fly. This, re this, if you were to use and utilize all the adjustment layers in this action, it would take you, it would still take you a significant amount of time. If you go back and watch her video, because I actually did go through her video, this video right here, it's 10 minutes long. The video itself is 10 minutes long. If you watch the video, she has sped up her retouching in it. You'll see her brush moving extremely quickly. I would estimate it probably took 20 to 30 minutes for her to finish that photo. This is not one click. It's a one click setup that will set up your adjustment layers in the way that she does her work, right? This is her kind of workflow. So if you want to work the way that she does, apparently, and I'm not, and I'm not 100% convinced that she actually uses this on her true day-to-day -day retouch retouches when she does her professional work. I'd be very surprised if she actually uses this. This seems more like a beginner action to get introduced to the whole subject of retouching. It's an email grab, let's, let's be honest, and it, the advertisement's misleading. It's not one click, it's not 90 seconds, and it does not complete 90% of the work. So, a little bit of disappointment here. Fail, in my opinion. Now, I haven't used any of her other actions or seen any of other classes, but at the outset, for me, as someone who is... I consider myself advanced to expert retouch retoucher, at least advanced, maybe not expert, still working on it. We're all growing and working on it. Um, I would consider this a fail. It's not true. And there are better ways to retouch. No real filters in Photoshop are not ideal. They're still working on them. There are other solutions out there like retouch for me that do a way better job. So those are some things to consider. So the takeaway from this is an improvement on everyone's part, including Shark Pixel. You can do better than attempting to mislead your clients to simply get an email. Let's do better as professional photographers who are selling our products. We need to be transparent with what our products can do and be clear about expectations. Okay, everyone, I hope that helps you. Have a good one. Stay creative.